A mid-year checkup, if done properly, can help you accomplish several things. The first is that it can help you to determine if you need to reassess your goals and strategies based on your year-to-date performance and your corresponding results. And it also represents a great opportunity to celebrate your wins and to pat yourself on the back for a job well done. It's something you should build into your calendar, and in my opinion, it's something that you should look forward to taking part in. Now, why is that? Well, because if you execute properly, this mid-year checkup can be like a powerful reminder that you are indeed on track for having your best year ever. However, if you've got off the reservation, it also represents a lifeline for getting back in the game and for making up for lost time in the second half of the year. Hi there, this is Gary Ryan Blair, and long ago I discovered a key performance discipline, one that has allowed me and my clients to continually grow, to improve, and prosper, and I'm talking quarter after quarter and year after year. In fact, it's been so effective in driving my own personal productivity that it's enabled me to increase my income and to hit my performance goals for 46 consecutive quarters. I'm talking over 11 years now. So what is it you may be asking? Well, it's called an after-action review, and it's all about measuring and reflecting upon your year-to-date performance. It's about reviewing lessons learned from the choices made and consequences received, as well as analyzing how you responded to challenges, to opportunities, and to fears. And in this message, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put this powerful resource to very good use. Now, to crush your third quarter goals and to make this your best year ever, you need to perform an after action review by analyzing what took place in the first six months of this year. And I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you need to leverage every nugget of knowledge for all it's worth. Unfortunately, that's exactly where the problem begins, as practically every company and every individual resists this important discipline. And as a result of this unnecessary faux pas, they don't learn enough from their mistakes, nor from their accomplishments, and they continue to repeat history rather than to create it. Well, today that changes forever. There are five unique steps in the after action review process. And for you to knock the ball out of the park in the third quarter, you need to immediately begin implementing the ideas that are generated from this exercise. So let's get started. Step number one is to identify your three greatest accomplishments. Now, you should always begin the after-action review process by focusing on your wins, on what you did right. Now, even if it's been a challenging start to the year for you, odds are that if you look closely enough, there's going to be something, somewhere, that you should be proud of. Step number two is to analyze what you learned from each accomplishment. See, now that you've identified your three greatest accomplishments, I want you to go back to each one. This time, though, I want you to identify what you did right and determine how you can use these accomplishments as a springboard for even greater wins in crushing your third quarter goals and for making this truly your best year ever. The goal here is to leverage, to optimize, and to amplify what you're doing right in order to accelerate your goals and to drive bigger results moving forward. And that moves us to step number three, which is to identify your biggest disappointments and how you may have let yourself down. Now, I know this question feels like you're putting a kick me sign on your back, but heck, you're here right now, so why not confront this question straight up and get to the root of the problem? So allow me to prompt you on this one. Think of promises that were made, think about poor execution, standards that may have been compromised. I'm talking about even opportunities avoided, people betrayed, or even values downplayed. Now, before you leap forward, you must liquidate and close the door on any habits, on any behaviors or attitudes that are holding you back. For the simple reason that you'll not be as successful as you can be in a third quarter if you remain stuck in your old ways. And that brings us to step number four, which is to analyze what you learn from each failure or disappointment. Now, a word of caution here. You do not want to resist analyzing your past sins or mistakes. Doing so will be a shame as this is where some of the best learning comes from. Now, no matter how great everything is going in your life right now, we all make mistakes. The trick here is to be a mature adult to analyze them, to find out what preceded them and what could have been done differently. And most importantly, how can you prevent them from reoccurring and haunting you in the future? Now, to make sure you don't limit or undermine yourself in the third quarter, you need to bring these self-defeating actions to the surface. You need to confront them. And most importantly, you need to determine what you must do differently in order to make sure you don't make the same mistakes all over again. And that brings us to the last step, step number five, which is to use this information to set your goals for the third quarter. See, if you want to perform at the top of your game, you absolutely must reflect, review, and respond to the information that's obtained through this after-action review process. 
Now, the purpose here is to build into your schedule, into your interactions, your management style, or whatever else you've surfaced in the previous questions, and to build yourself a new and improved and superior approach. Now, in closing, I want you to review this after-action review exercise not as an opportunity to beat yourself up, but as a chance to uncover the goals and the priority activities that you need to focus on in the third quarter.